elk. The sun rises behind me, and I am still running. The trees thin to nothing. The ground goes flat. I could run until the earth meets the sky, but the smell of water calls me. I veer from my course to a shallow pool ringed with reeds and shrubs. I smell the wind for dangers, but there is nothing at all. As I drink, the nothing I smell and hear and see weighs me down like stones. Father is gone. Growl, too. But what of the rest? Did Warm find a place to hide? Did Mother and the pups? Did the survivors scatter? They could be anywhere. I pace the edge of the water. I want to call them, need to call them. But to survive, they must hide. I need, I raise my nose to the wind, but there is no smell of anything but grass and water. A pack of birds, as brown and yellow as the tall grass around them, flints from one stalk to the next. They sing as if nothing has happened. I snap at one, and the whole pack of them sweeps up and away. I turn my ears in every direction. Wind. Bees. The rustle of mice through the grass. The whisper of a snake following. I turn a full circle twice. I am alone. Should I go and find them? Wait here by the water? The air will be cooler come night. It will carry a smell better. I curl up in the tall grass, tucking my tail in for comfort, but my heart pounds as though I am at a dead run. I used to go off on my own. In the mountains, there is always something beautiful just over the next ridge. A lake, a berry field, a sheltered patch of ice. But I always came home to my family. I have never, not once in my life, slept alone. The weary day goes on and on, and nobody comes. They could be anywhere. In the forest on the far side of the mountain, deep in the river canyon. I circle again and again, listening, smelling. The sky darkens and my pack does not come. Stars come out and I can smell no one. And then a full moon rises and the pale wolves begin to howl. First the leader and then another howls in and another and another. I lose count of them. Their voices are strange and wild and mean. And then at the very end of their song, Sharp gives a low and whimpering howl. He is their following wolf now and no brother of mine. If any of my pack live, they are silent or gone. The wolf star, brightest of all in the summer sky, shines over my home ground. I know every hidden lake and rocky ridge, but if my pack is not in the mountains, then it is not home to me. I feel a howl deep inside, but dare not let it out. In the morning, I wake with a start. I can smell warm. I spring to my feet and raise my nose to the wind. The smell is gone. But I did smell something. I dreamed of warm sleeping, curled up under my chin as he always does, singing his quiet songs. I dash over to a rise in the ground and sample the breeze again. Maybe I was wrong. There is no smell from a footfall. He has not walked past. But there is a very faint wolf smell carried on the wind, mixed in with the nip of pine sap and sweet mountain flowers. It could be him. He would follow me anywhere, he promised, but he would keep our pup safe first. I spring up and run for my home ground. I will find him and the pups too. I will save them all. The ground rises. I keep searching. I stop. Breathe in. Turn in a full circle. I hold my breath with listening. It is gone, but it was there. I know it was. I keep going. Hoping that Warm found a way to slip through the enemy pack, Hoping Mother and the pups found a place to hide. No wolf knows our mountains like Mother. I run until the shadow of them falls over me. Still nothing. I trot to one side and then the other, listening, tasting the air. And then it hits me like a rock falling from a ledge. The border mark of the pale wolf pack. I can see where they have stood and claw marked the bark and long slashes as high as they can reach. Where they have wet the tree trunks. The smell turns my stomach over. These were my trees, my meadows, my cold streams and ice cap peaks. But the border mark stops me like the face of a cliff. I must not pass. I cannot leave warm to the teeth and claws of the intruders. I wet mark a tree on my side of the border. I beat the ground with my paws, laying down a scent he can follow. I run along the prairie side of the border and wet mark the scattered oaks and aspen as I go. 
I cannot kill the pale wolves, but I can light a path for warm to find me. The prairie is hotter than the forest and more colorful. Blue and purple and red flowers nod in the wind. They hum with bees, and everywhere I step, there is a grasshopper or beetle scuttling away from my paw. As the heat of the day comes on, I climb a buttle and stake a lookout for warm for any survivor of my pack. Way over by the cannon rim, I see elk. Good. When I find my family, we will need to hunt. The broad winged hawk with the rust colored tail turns slow circles in the sky, and the little hawk with the speckled wings hovers and strikes at mice. All afternoon, I watch and listen. Black and white cows and their pups browse the grass. As the shadows lengthen, the pack of the cows moves along and sheep wander through the shrubs at the foot of my butt. They are slow and, ha and have ugly voices. I am about to head back for water when I smell them. Wolves. I run to the edge of the butt's flat top. It is not warm. There are at least two wolves by the smell of things. They are not my pack. They could be hunters from the enemy pack, scouts looking to kill every last one of us. I crouch freezing among the boulders. In leaving a path for warm, I have led the pale wolf straight to me. I am certain I cannot run any single wolf, but nobody can outrun a whole pack. I watch their approach. There are two. Only two. They are not tracking my path as they come. They are stalking prey. I am dizzy with relief when I see, by their dark brown and boulder gray coats, that they are not the enemy pack. These wolves are young, like me, and male. I listen and wait for the rest of their pack to join the hunt, but no one else comes. They must be on their own. Yearling, ba yearling bachelors. They drop into the waiting to hunt crouch with their eyes fixed on sheep, coyote food. Father never fed us sheep. I look from one wolf to the other to see which is leader. They both carry their tails tall. They are both in inching ahead to be the first to spring. This is not going to go well. The brown wolf springs first, but the sheep ducks to the side, whirls free, and runs screaming across the prairie. The gray wolf springs a moment too late and only manages to grab a hind leg in his teeth. He holds on to the kicking sheep as all the rest want to run away. The brown wolf turns back and drives home, the killing bite. Afterward, there is no nod to thank the lead wolf, no pause to honor the life of the meat. Both wolves tear through the skin, spilling guts in the dirt and dragging the choicest bits of food from each mother's mouths. A disgusting thing to see. No order in the pack, no respect. Maybe they are orphans. They must have learned to hunt from watching coyotes. I turn away from them and look to my mountains. Mother and the pups could have escaped. They could be on the far side of the mountains. Warm and song, maybe even pounce or wag, could be with them. They could be out on a prairie somewhere hunting elk like wolves should. Mother would never abandon her pups. She would defend them to our death. We all would. Hunger wakes me at dawn. A vulture is picking over the remains of the sheep the bachelor wolves left behind. The wolves are long gone, and I want no part of them. They are no better than the sulking coyotes that came in the dark to pick over our scraps and slink away before sunrise. Elk were on the horizon yesterday. That is what father would want me to hunt. If any of my packs survived, that is where they will be. I set aside my hunger and run. Even with my sorrows, running is all joy. There are no trees or windfalls or ravines to dodge around. I run flat out, the ground pounding under my paws. If my family is alive, they will be near the elk. The smell of elk grows stronger. I lift my nose as I run to search for some scent of my pack. I circle around to where the elk can't smell me. My family would gather here and wait for the right moment. I slow to a trot. Stop. Nothing. I circle back, bark a call. A prairie full of food is waiting for us, but my pack is gone. I bark out another call and another. No one calls back. They cannot be gone, not all of them. Grass and shrubs spread up before me as broad as the sky. How will I ever find them? Hunger beats me to the ground and I lie in the grass, wishing for the cool shade, the soft moss, and the needles of my home ground. The size of the sky makes me feel small and I long for the company of trees. Over the open ground come the voices of elk. The relaxed whines and whistles tell me they have not got wind that I am here. Even though I am thirsty, water runs from my mouth at the sound of them. I will hunt. I must. And when I've brought down meat, my pack will come. 
They will see the ravens and vultures gather. They will hear coyotes sing my praises, and they will find me. The elk are far, but I am fast. I run for them, not caring that I am spending speed before I should. I will feed my pack. Nothing else matters. They hold their position at first, but soon the mother elk standing guard barks a call to run. Pup mother, Pups mother up. They move together towards the sunset. I do not care. No one can run like me. I gain on them steadily until the beat of hoofs on the ground is all I can hear, and elk and sweat and fear is all I can smell. The pups bleat in full panic. I find an elk that is falling behind and mark him as mine. I can taste the meat already. I will take this elk down and warm will find me. Mother and the rest will come running from wherever they are hiding. We will be a pack again, and this will be our new home ground. I run alongside the elk as father did. He would pick a moment to leap and make a killing blow. I have seen him do it, but I always ran in front and turned the herd. There is no one to turn them for me now. Hunger drives me to run faster, to get out in front of the elk and turn him so that I can make the killing strike. The others swerve away, and my mark comes to a dead stop, bellowing in anger and waving his head from side to side. I check my run and circle back, only to have the elk turn again. In less than a heartbeat, he kicks, slicing deep into the meat of my chest. My breath whooshes out. I hear the crack of bone. Fire runs up my neck and down to the pads of my feet. I hit the ground and night falls as swift as a thunderclap. Pain. Darkness clears like a lifting fog. Pain is bone deep in my shoulder. I lift my head and the prairie grass shimmers around me like water. My head drops back to the ground and darkness swallows me again. In my dreams, I am fighting an enemy pack I cannot see, but when I fight free and open my eyes, I am alone. The throb in my chest aches with every breath. I cannot feel one paw. I push at it with my nose, but it will not move. I lick it, but no warmth comes. The elk are nowhere in sight. Red drips into a pool under my shoulder. I look smell all around. The elk are long gone. One vulture makes broad circles above me. Hunger makes my head swim. I lick at my hurt. I am so thirsty I lap up the entire pool of red. I long for my den, for the shelter of trees. I turn my face to the mountains and remember my home ground. When I wake, I smell a wolf again, just one, and it is far from me. I desperately want it to be warm. I need it to be a wolf wolf for my pack, someone who will find me and help me grow strong again, not an enemy wolf who will kill me on sight. Not one of those bachelor wolves who might kill me if he had the chance. They are low enough to eat sheep. They just might. There is a thought worse than being killed. They might find me and then walk away because I am no pack mate of theirs. I might have done the same just a few sunrises ago. Not now. Now I know what it means to be alone. Night has fallen and I am hungrier and weaker than before. When I lift my head, pain runs like a wolf. is still in the air. Faintly, so very faintly. I brace myself to stand, but only my back legs will bear weight. It could be warm, my warm, all alone in the night, just like me. I should find him. I should help him. The stars are bright, and the moon rests on the horizon like an egg in a nest. I take a breath, try to stand again. I call to warm that I am coming. Beg him to wait for me. The edges of my hurt shoulder split open, and red pours out again. I slump, dizzy and heartsick in the dirt. I lie still and watch the stars. They move across the sky as steady and slow as elk graze across the prairie. The wolf smell fades from the air. When it is gone, completely gone, I whimper for my brother like a newborn pup. In the dark of the night, I wake with a start. A wolf has walked by me while I slept. A female wolf, not mother, not wag, or pounce, or song. She came to me in the night. She walked all around me, looked at me, smelled me. There is a tuft of black hair and a print of her paw on the dust. A prickle of fear rises along my neck and shoulders. She could be a scout from the enemy pack. Even now she could be bringing them there here to kill me. I try to remember the smells of the pale wolves. My memory of that day is a blur of snarling teeth and claws soaked in red. I do not remember a black wolf among them. I shiver from nose to tail. I cannot run from them. My one strength and in my hour of need it has abandoned me. I will never call myself swift again. I search out the wolf star that hangs faithfully over my home ground. 
I can only hope and face whatever comes with all the fight I have left. By sunrise, the pale wolves have not come. Maybe the stranger wolf that visited me is alone too. Maybe she is just as afraid. How could she know that I would never hurt a lone wolf who came to me who came to me in peace? Not when my own sisters might be out there somewhere, just as lonely and frightened. I lift off I lift my head up I lift my head to look for her, but I'm alone in a vast flat lake of grass. The red has stopped running from the cut on my chest, and in place of the open slit is a long brown patch as rough as tree bark. It is stuck to my skin, and no amount of licking will move it. Thirst is making me whimper like a pup, but the instinct to hold still has me in a powerful grip. I lick the dew from the grass in the circle that I can reach without standing up. The paw that felt nothing before now feels everything. Every little breeze that stirs my fur burns like a crackling fire. I lie still. The prairie is empty around me. Even the vulture is left. In his place, packs of little birds visit me. They are small and grass-colored. They flit and sing, hopping from stalk to blade of grass, eating seeds and ants and watching the sky for hawks. When one comes, they scatter like smoke in the wind. All day I watch them, learning their voices, their smells, and the way they run through the sky. Some are all flap. Others flap and then hold, making one long swoop after another. My favorite is the green-backed hovering bird, the smallest of them all. A flash of purple shimmers at her throat. She has no pack, no muscle, no meat to her at all, but her flying puts every other bird to shame. The eagle, for all his power, is not so nimble. I watch her hover and dive until the wisps of clouds turn pink and gold. By night, the fire is gone from my foot, but hunger takes its place as chief among my pains. I eat grass. In the morning, my instinct to lie still is gone, but I have no strength to stand. If my pack were here, they would bring meat. I draw on air as much as my body can hold and call for their help. The howl comes from deep inside of me. The high and low sounds roll from my chest and out into the wind. I turn my ears to each direction, straining to hear an answer. No one howls back. As the day goes on, one vulture and then another circles above me. A fat beetle scuttles by. I lick it from the ground. It is not so bad. I have seen bears in a boulder field turning over rocks and eating the moss that live underneath. I creep forward and roll a small rock over. Nothing. And nothing into the next rock. But the next one I try as a bug. I eat it and I am still hungry. I slap a butterfly out of the air with my good paw. I eat it and I am still hungry. Another vulture joins the circle in the sky. All creatures eat and all, and all are eaten in the end. But I am not ready to be eaten. Not today. I want my pack, my own pack. I want to run, to hunt, to live. I tell the vultures so as plainly as I can, but they keep circling above me, waiting. I cannot run. I can barely walk, but I can creep, and my nose tells me that mice are nearby. I take a, tep toward, take a step towards the smell and rest, take another step and rest. The sun is lower in the sky, and the green hovering bird comes again to dance around my head. When I turn back to the work at hand, what I had thought was a pile of stones in front of me uncoils and slithers away. Mother warned me about snakes. They are sharp-toothed and do not like to be stepped on. But are they food? Father would be ashamed of me for thinking so, but today anything that moves is food. I crouch and prepare to stalk it, wondering how fast it can go. It makes a slow loop across the grass, and then, like lightning, it strikes, and with a wild squeak, an orange-brown vole disappears down its throat. And then the snake goes still, the vole inching down the snake's insides in a large speckled lump. I kill the snake and gulp it down, vole and all, and then I snarl at the vultures in the sky. I will not die, I growl, not today.